For the song A Million Dreams, the little black building in front of us was featured as a young P.T. Barnum admired his reflection in the storefront window. We film music videos out here sometimes too. We did LMFAO's Party Rock Anthem, Little Mix and Halsey have had uh, music videos. More recently, a few commercials. Zendaya did a Valentino commercial on Hennessy Street for the Super Bowl. Megan Thee Stallion did a Cheetos commercial out here as well. To the left, this little green building has become a pet shop on two separate occasions. Once in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. This is a pet store that catches on fire and Pee Wee goes in to save all the animals one by one with some hesitation about the snakes. Then it was the pet shop again for the Jennifer Lopez movie, The Backup Plan. It's been featured in the backgrounds of shows like The Big Bang Theory and Everybody Loves Raymond. Um, but it is also rumored to have been the architectural inspiration for the central perk on Friends. Friends did a few photo shoots out here on Hennessy Street, as well as a handful of scenes. One scene being when Chandler has a crush on Joey's girlfriend, Kathy. Chandler sees Kathy out on a run, and he does whatever he can to get her attention. He's yelling, Kathy, Kathy. He crashes into hot dog carts, piles of trash, dogs on a walk. She finally notices him and all he has the courage to say is a very nervous, hi. <laughs> this part of the street became a Chinatown for the movie Gremlins. To the right, that stairwell leads to the China shop where Gizmo is originally purchased for Christmas. Mm. You also saw in the video the transformation this part of the street had when it became a Gotham City for Batman Forever. Robin gets a hold of the Batmobile. He's cruising down the street feeling pretty hot. He pulls up to a group of women. It was actually a cameo from the girl group En Vogue. And clearly they're disappointed that it is Robin and not Batman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this little alleyway to the right is my favorite part of property. Uh, that stairwell on the side of the building is where Prince stood for his Purple Rain album cover. Just in front of those steps is where we had the iconic Upside Down Spider-Man kiss from the Spider-Man starring Tobey Maguire and Kirsten Dunst. <laughs> so you may remember that it is raining during that scene. We don't get a ton of rain here in Los Angeles. So we have to make our own. We use something called a rain grid, which is basically like a sprinkler system, but our droplets of water are a lot thicker. That way you can actually see it appear on the camera. Keep in mind though that Tobey Maguire was hanging upside down to studio and re-say their lines. That method is referred to as ADR, Automated Dialogue Replacement. And when I dropped off at 48, you get to do some of your own over there. This little area is called Park Place. Because of this little horseshoe shape to the right of us, we get a nice echo over here. So we take advantage of that, and this is where we record some of our sound effects for our video games, as well as our Godzilla and King Kong roars for those films. Also to the right, these are partially dressed sets. Later on, I'll go more into depth on what a dressed set means exactly, but for the time being, I'm referring to the signage that's uh, outside of the storefronts. These are for Young Sheldon, and it's made to look like Medford, Texas. Young Sheldon is the prequel series to the Big Bang Theory, following the life of a young <laughs> Sheldon Cooper. To the left, this kind of set is called a facade. Uh, you can look through some of the windows on the higher floors, and you see just some wooden pillars. And if the front doors were open, you'd see a wall just a few feet in. So we really would not be able to film properly inside, so we can only use the exterior for filming. When we only use the exterior, the set is called a facade. This facade was, fe was featured in Spider-Man Homecoming. Tom Holland sits on the roof of this building and he calls Iron Man's right hand guy to report all of his good doings, including that he told an old lady directions. So she bought him a chair to say thank you for filming, which will take place tomorrow. But here's a video to show you about what goes on on New York Street. Steiner from Gilmore Girls. I didn't have any Gilmore fans, right? No? Well, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> but this area is Midwest, also known as Any Town USA, <laughs> because it's been transformed into 400 plus places all around the US. Wow. Stars Hollow, Connecticut for Gilmore Girls, Rosewood, Pennsylvania for Pretty Little Liars, 
uh, Bluba, Alabama, Harv Dixie, Medford, Texas for Young Sheldon. And that's just to name a few. Uh, here's a video to give a few more examples. Midwest Street was turned into River City, Iowa for the film version of the Broadway musical The Music Man. The town square also stood in as Salinas, California for East of Eden. And those are the same storefront facades that were used as the backdrop for Misty from Clint Eastwood's Jersey Boys. In this motion picture, Frankie Valley kept lookout for his friends in front of this small market. And that small market was used as Lucky Leon's cupcake shop on the TV series Pretty Little Liars. You'll see Midwest Street on a lot of television shows. In fact, it was turned into all of Star's power for the hit series Gilmore Girls. Stop. This was also in Gremlins. Mrs. Deagle is the mean neighbor on the streets. The Gremlins tamper with her chairlifts and she goes crashing out the front window there. It's also in a new show called Shining Veil, vale, which is airing on Stars. It stars Courtney Cox, who played Monica on Friends. And it's about a family who accidentally purchased a haunted house. To taxi right where we are, Unfortunately, she's unable to get out of the vehicle due to a cranky Jack Russell that keeps attacking the cart. Also, it is the frat house on Sex Lives of College Girls, the HBO Max show that's produced by Mindy Kaling. Anybody here watch The Rookie? Yeah? You watch The Rookie on ABC? Yeah. yeah? So there, are you caught up on the show? Well, there was a recent episode where they had to uh, search a house and they had a drug dog inside the house. They used this house and the dog got distracted by a squirrel. Mm -hmm. This is just a theory of mine with me being a fan of the show myself, but we do have tons of wild squirrels on property. So I uh, do think that the dog actually did get distracted by a squirrel and they just kept it in the shop. But he's looking out that window right there and sees a squirrel. Mm -hmm. We have a saying here on our property, anything for the picture meaning that we really want to take full advantage of our space. Even if we have uh, production offices, we still want the exteriors to look like something that could be used for filming purposes. So all of the houses here on King's Row have multiple fronts on them. That way we can use it from every angle. This blue house here is our Gilmore Girl house. The front that we're looking at now is where Sookie lived. She was played by Melissa McCarthy. And the front that's on the other side is where Lorelei lived. All of the houses on the street are also practical sets. Practical sets are the opposite of a facade, meaning that there's plenty of space inside that we would be able to film adequately. And in just a little bit, I'm going to take you inside of a practical set. To the right, this is the Geller house featured in an episode of Friends called the one with the prom video. We have a flashback to prom night in the 80s. Rachel and Monica are getting ready for the dance, but Rachel's date is running late. Ross's dad convinces him to throw in an old tuxedo and save the day. But by the time Ross comes down the stairs that you can get a peek of in the front door, Rachel is already out the door with her date. Mm -hmm. Any questions about this space before we head out? Young Sheldon. Uh, so it was the high school on Gilmore Girls and Pretty Little Liars. But years ago, it was the police station in James Dean's Rebel Without a Cause. All three of his movies are Warner Brother Pictures, uh, Rebel Without a Cause, East of Eden, and Giant. I guess uh, no air conditioning in the building, so that's how they put air conditioning in them when they're filming? Exactly. I'm going to go more into depth on that in just a minute. But here on our back lots, we bring portable air conditioning. But hey, they work really well. I bet so. Gets chilly. To the left. This is the Tanner's house from Full and Fuller House. Uh, the real house, house is located in San Francisco. Um, however, we had this one built for social media purposes when Fuller House came to film on property. But both shows did film here. John Stamos, who played Uncle Jesse, spent the most time here because he also was here for ER as well. But I'm gonna park right here. And we'll go on a little. Is our last existing set from Casablanca. It's where we have a flashback of our couple in Paris and they first hear news of the war breaking out. Here's a move. I wish I knew about it for you. And it's not something that we own, so like we're really not allowed to. Yeah. 
They just drive in the background of TV shows and movies. And we only had, let's just say, five. And they went in a circle over and over to make it look like it was a busy day after school and all the parents were picking up. But sometimes they'd switch their order. That way, in case anybody was really dying to catch them, they couldn't. But that's where we had the whole facade of the elements. Now we are at Central Park. So Friends only filmed on location three times when they went to London for Ross's wedding, when they went to the beach and Monica got stung by the jellyfish, and when they went to the desert for Joey's movie that was filming in Las Vegas. <laughs> so they never actually went to New York City, which is why we had to make our very own Central Park. That little dirt path over there is where Rachel was embarrassed by Phoebe's silly run. Yeah. <laughs> the grassy area behind the fountain is where Ross turned into Red Ross when playing rugby to impress his fiance Emily. And also, just before I forget, that building over there across the street is where Ross breaks up with his student slash girlfriend Elizabeth mm -hmm. and she dumps the water I'm balloons sorry. on his head. The centerpiece of the park, though, is the Friends Fountain. Uh, just, this isn't where they did the theme song, though. 
The fountain was originally at our other location. It's called The Ranch. We had it moved here in 2019 for the 25 year anniversary. So this is where they did the Friends reunion though. So in just a second, I think, uh, year stage 25 is now where we film Bob Hart's Abishola, uh, a CBS show starring Billy Gardell, created by Chuck Lorre. And just so no one's concerned, this ambulance is a picture car specific to Bob Hart's Abishola, because Abishola works at a hospital. To the right, stage 24 has the other Chuck Lorre show, United States of Al. But stage 24 is the friend stage. It's where they film seasons two through 10, as well as the friend reunion. Oh yeah, I know. To the right, stage 19 was for young Sheldon. They just went on hiatus for the summer. Stage 20 will have the sex lives of college girls coming back to film season two this summer. Also to the left, stage 15, another stage for young Sheldon. Before that, it was for Conan, Conan O'Brien's late night talk show. Um, before that, it was for the art department. They want to take advantage of natural lighting. So that's why it's the only stage that has windows installed. You ever see people here? We get in a single file line, camera on TV, pushed in the corner, then several cameras on the audience. Does nobody else want a picture? Mm. I have a question. Yeah. So, are they, these are all lights, right? Yes, yeah. you so took the words right out of it. Okay. Just, just one second, sorry. Mm -hmm. So, anybody that doesn't want a picture, we can hang out over here then, so another group could come. So, okay. we, there's also cameras that from the audience, because, uh, Ellen really wanted to talk to the reactions. She dances, she's funny, she gives out prizes. So she wanted them to be included. That's why there's not only lights on Ellen, but also on the audience. And now your question. Oh yeah, uh, do you still have a temperature problem in this room when it's <laughs> So, since we are not on the back lot, all the sound stages have normal functioning air conditioning. Um, when you're backstage, it is freezing cold. When you're out here though, especially when you're dancing with Chuck, you do get a little toasty, but it's still comfortable. Yeah. Um, so also Paragon, we could film an episode 24 hours in advance. On our way to the back of it, uh, I'll tell you all about it.